Hello, thanks for joining me on this video tutorial to get up and running with the FreePass simulator as quickly as possible. My name's Richard Arnold. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I want to take a look at what you can do with a simulator and the system requirements it's going to take for you to run it. So to find that information, let's head on over to the blog, freepardude.com. Search on simulator. And here we go, free power simulator publicly available. Um, for a good while, the simulator was only available to partners and it must have been the most asked question I got on Twitter. How can I get it? Well, good news is it's now available for everyone. So let's take a look at what requirements you're gonna to need to run it. First of all, you're gonna need a uh, VMware lab of some, of some sorts. You can either use VMware Workstation 11 or above, or VMware ESXi 5.5 or above. The nice thing about it is it does give you a wide range of capabilities you would expect from a standard physical free power. That means things like adaptive optimization, dynamic optimization, snapshots, exporting volumes, thin provisioning, remote copy, you name it, you've got it. What is worth noting though is you cannot use this simulator as like a VSA you cannot use it to store things on. The setup is going to comprise of three VMs. Each of the VMs is going to need the following resource requirements. One CPU, three VNICs, two gig of RAM and 50 gig of disk space. So as you can see, the, the requirements are generally fairly light. Finally, before we just dig into it, I want to give you a high level overview of the steps we're going to be taking. So you can get a feel for the process end to end. First of all, we're going to install the two cluster node VMs. We're going to be able to deploy them from OVFs, so it's going to be nice and simple. Next, we're going to deploy another VM from OVF that's going to represent the enclosures. Then we're going to create a private network between the VMs so they can all talk to each other. And finally, once we power it on, it'll run through like a mini out of the box setup, which we're going to complete. I think we've got a good feel now for what the free pass simulator is going to do for us and the system requirements we're going to need to do it. So if you're in with me, let's go ahead and get it. Go to the free pass software depot. I'm going to do it through Google, but I will also be putting the link down below. The free pass software depot is a collection of all the useful free tools you can use with free pass. So take a little bit of time to look around here. The one that we're interested in today is the HPE free part software simulator. So let's go ahead and select that. You're going to be prompted for your HPE passport, which is basically just a, a username and password. Go ahead and register if you don't already have one. And then you will arrive at this screen here. Um, you'll simply need to fill in your address information. I've got mine here, my company name, Richard Arnold. Consultancy Limited, and my address. One for the English guys here, put down in the comments below if you know what 29 Acacia Road belongs to. Tick yes to accept, and if you want to be spammed for life, also tick yes there. When you're ready, click next to begin your download. Once you arrive at the download screen, you've got two things you're gonna be able to download. The PDF that gives you the instructions, I'm saving you the time with this video. And also, of course, the free pass simulator itself. It's a fairly chunky download, almost 10 gig in size. So give yourself some time to download this. When the download completes, you're going to see this zipped folder here in the location you chose to save it to. So let's go ahead and extract that. I've skipped ahead here and we can see that the folder has finished extracting itself. So let's go ahead and open that. Inside that folder, you can find a little bit like a Russian doll, there's something else that needs extracting. So you need to go ahead and extract those. I have gone ahead and done that myself to save a little bit of time. And in the end, you'll end up with these two folders. Now, let's just remind ourselves of what we're gonna do with these. You've got your cluster nodes here. These are gonna be two VMs that represent the nodes of your free power. And you've also got some files here, again, also in the 
OBF format and this is going to represent the disks and the networking between the nodes in your cluster. So let's open up Workstation and go ahead and deploy this. I'm using Workstation 12 here, you can use Workstation 11 or above and you can also use VMware ESXi 5.5 or above. The process in 5.5 is going to differ slightly on the networking element However, please do follow along with the video because most of the steps are going to be very similar. So let's go ahead and deploy those nodes to start with. We're going to choose to open a virtual machine. We're going to go to that area where I have extracted the VMs. Choose the cluster nodes. There's the OVF I want. It's worth noting at this stage that the, um, at the time of talking here, the simulator is right up to date with the uh, production version of the free part os 3.2.1 mu2 so let's go ahead and uh, bring that in choose a name for the first node in your free part cluster i'm going to choose free part dude node one and then just click import this can take some time so we're going to go ahead and we'll be back in a minute as it's an OVF, it's brought everything in there exactly as it should do for us, and no action is necessary from us at this stage. So let's go ahead and bring in the second node of the cluster. We again browse to exactly the same file we were looking at last time, the OVF for the cluster template, and bring it in using exactly the same method. Brilliant. We can now see both of those OVFs have been imported, and it forms for two nodes of our three part cluster. Remember, this is emulating exactly like we do in the hardware world. So it's just like the two nodes you get in a FIPAR 7200 or a 8200. So we've got the nodes. The next thing we need to do is import the VM that's going to emulate the disks for us in our simulator setup. So I'm going to go to the ESD node folder I extracted earlier. Again, find the ESD node template OVF and run through exactly the same procedure. I'm then going to click open and I'm just going to call this exposure. Import that and let's let that go ahead and we will skip ahead again. Okay so we're cooking on gas now. We've got all three VMs we're going to need as part of this setup. We've got nodes 1 and 2 representing the free par cluster and the enclosure VM. Let's go ahead and in this section configure the networking. Let's choose the first node in our free par cluster. Right click, choose settings. And we're going to see that the OVF template we've deployed has got three network cards. Now, the network config we're going to do on this first node, we're going to repeat exactly the same on the, the other two VMs that we've got. Now, the first network card is used to connect to the management tools. So things like PuTTY, um, the management console, SSMC. So we need to put this on a network where our management tools are in. Network adapter 2 is used only if you're doing a remote copy. Um, simulator which we're not so we can ignore network card 2 and network card 3 this is the one used by the cluster for its internal communication so the three VMs have got to talk to each other this is a private network and it's going to happen across this so let's go ahead and configure that like I said network card 1 is going to be used for the management network so in our case we're going to choose host only that's already set for us. Um, network card 3, we want to be a private network, so let's go ahead and create a LAN segment for that. I'm going to call it SIM internal. Okay, that. Choose the drop down. Okay. That's the first one done, nice and simple. So let's go ahead and do the second one. Right click, settings. Network card one, we're going to set to host only. This is our management network. Network card three, we're going to set to our private network segment that we created. 
OK. And exactly the same again here. Card 1 on our management network, we're using host only. And finally, network card 3. Again, we're going to choose LAN segment, the one we created earlier, and OK. OK, so we're running through the steps here for VMware Workstation, but you can apply the same logic to do this for ESXi. Network adapter 1, you would put on the same network as your other VMs that were running your management tools. Network adapter 3, again, used for private communication in the cluster. So you just create a vSwitch, no network cards attached, and then plumb them into this network. Okay, that's the network config all done. That's the network config complete, but there is a setting we need to take a note of before moving forwards. So in your workstation, to go to your home screen, choose Edit, Virtual Network Editor, and we're looking for the host only entry, and it will have the name of VMNet1. Now, the reason we want to look at this is because if you look towards the bottom of the screen, it tells you the internal IP address range that's going to be associated with the host only network. Now, the reason to take a note of this is that IP address range can vary depending on the version of Workstation. So, in our case, it's for 192.168.11.0 network. We're going to need a note of this for future, so either write it down or I'm lazy, so I'm going to take a, a snip of that. And we'll come back to that later. Excellent job, guys. That's all the steps relating to the setup of the VM themselves complete. To continue watching part two, in which we will complete this three part simulated setup, simply click on the link in the description and you will then be given instant access to watch part two. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.